The set of real numbers is a set that we're going to be dealing with throughout our study of elementary and college mathematics. So what are the elements of the set of real numbers? The real numbers are all those numbers that appear on the number line. That is, every single point on the line corresponds to one real number. So what we're trying to figure out is what are these numbers that appear on the number line? Because all of these numbers put together will give us the real number set. We have a zero somewhere. Zero is a real number. What other numbers are on the number line? Well, the most common ones that we use every day and which probably you've already thought of are the counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. We actually have a special name for all these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. They're called the natural numbers. And we have this special symbol to represent them. So anytime you see this symbol, you know we're talking about the set of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And these are called the natural numbers. In set notation, whenever we use these ellipses, the three dots, they mean and so on, that the pattern continues. So you want to make sure before you put these three dots that you've given enough numbers here that whoever is looking at it can read it. They know what the pattern is going to be after that. Now, if we combine this zero with the natural numbers, we get what is called a set of whole numbers. And this is a set which has in it zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. So the only difference between the set of natural numbers and the set of whole numbers is the addition of the zero. All right, we still haven't figured out every number on the number line. What other numbers are there? Well, we also have the negatives. Negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on to the left. Now, if we put together all these positive numbers, the natural numbers, all the negatives of it and the zero, we get what is called a set of integers. We use this symbol and this is the set of integers. And this is a set which has all the negative natural numbers, the negatives of the natural numbers and the natural numbers and the zero. Okay, now look at our number line again. I have gaps. There are numbers in between these. There are, well, infinitely many points between every single natural number. So for example, between one and two here, we have infinitely many other numbers. What numbers could be between 1 and 2? Well, I can always go 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and so on. But what are these numbers? For example, between 0 and 1, there's a half, there's a fourth, there's a seventh, there's an eighth, meaning there's 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 seventh, 1 eighth, and I can continue on 1 over 1,000, 1 over 1 billion, and so on. What are these numbers called? We call them the rational numbers. And we use this symbol for it. This is a set whose elements are all numbers in the form A over B, such that A and B are integers, 
and b is not equal to 0. Let's examine this set. Okay, so this is the set of rational numbers. And these are all the numbers in fractional form. And the a has to be an integer, the b has to be an integer, but b cannot be 0. Why? Because we cannot divide by 0, it's undefined. So all the numbers in the form integer divided by integer but the denominator can't be 0. Let's look at some examples of these numbers. Well, we already, when we looked at the number line, we know all these numbers like 1 fourth, 1 half, 1 seventh, or 2 thirds. All these are rational numbers. So some examples are 1 half, again 1 is an integer, the 2 is an integer, so integer over integer, it's a rational number. 1000 divided by 2084 is a rational number. Again, we have an integer in the numerator, integer in the denominator, and the and the integer in the denominator is not a zero so we're good and also two is a rational number you can say well wait a minute two does not look like a fraction it does not look like an integer over integer well think about two as two over one what is two over one two what, what do you think this is saying? Another example. Negative 5 is also a rational number. Well, it can be written as negative 5 over 1. So what this is saying is that the natural numbers, the set of natural numbers, and the set of integers are subset of rational numbers, meaning all the numbers that are natural numbers and all the numbers that are integers are included in the rational numbers. Because every natural number can be written like something over 1. And every integer can be written as something uh, that integer over 1. But what about the 0? Well, 0 can be written as 0 over 1, which is equal to a 0, right? So 0 is also a rational number. What other numbers are rational? Well, 1.2 is rational. But again, wait a minute, 1.2 does not look like a fraction, but you can put it as a fraction. How? Well, 1.2 is the same as 12 over 10. Another example, 0.3 is a rational number because it can be written as 3 over 10. If you have point three, 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 three going on and on, this is also a rational number because it can be written as one over three. Okay, now to summarize. The rational numbers are all those numbers that can be written in a fraction form, in the form a over b, where a and b are integers. So any number that looks like 1 half, where it's integer divided by integer, is a rational number.
but also the natural numbers and the set of integers are also rational numbers because they can be written as a fraction as well. What's more is we notice that all terminating decimals meaning after the decimal it ends somewhere. The number doesn't go on forever. All terminating decimals are also rational numbers. And all repeating decimals are also rational numbers because they can also be written as a fraction. Now let's go back to our number line. Have we picked all the numbers, all the points on the number line? Have we gotten every single point here? Well, it turns out, no. There are other kinds of numbers that are on the number line that, that, that are not accounted for with a set of rational numbers. What are these numbers? They're called the irrational numbers. And how do we write the set of irrational numbers? Well, these are all those numbers, if we go back to our number line again, these are all those numbers that are left over after we've selected the rational numbers on the line. Right? There's still these numbers left over. So, the set of irrational numbers is the set which has in it all those x such that x is a real number x is element of real numbers but not rational you can think of them as leftovers after you take away all the rational numbers from the real number line Let's have a few examples. The irrational numbers are radical 2 is irrational. The famous irrational number pi is irrational. 2 pi would be irrational. Radical 5 would be irrational. Radical 7 would be irrational. What's characteristic about the irrational numbers is that the pattern after the decimal does not repeat. For example, let's look at the digits of pi. Like you see here, pi is 3.14159 and it keeps going and going and going without any special pattern and it does not end. The irrational numbers are like that. Now finally, the set R of real numbers is a set consisting of all x such that x is rational or x is irrational. Another way to say it would be Q union the irrational number set. Okay, so the real numbers are all the rationals and irrationals put together. But we know that rational numbers also include in it the naturals, the whole numbers, the integers, are all inside the rational numbers. So there you go. We have our set of real numbers and these are the numbers we're going to be dealing with and studying for a long long time now. So make sure you get a very good understanding of these numbers.